you know, we have lack all kinds of understanding regarding people's mental health and health issues that are incarcerated. The research would tell you that there is um, a need to um, focus on mental health. The Psychology Office of the Department of Corrections of Pennsylvania provides oversight to facilities, psychology departments, and other departments in the delivery of mental health services. They work with executive and management staff, facilities, community correction centers, community contract facilities, and parole staff throughout the state to ensure psychological services, policies, and procedures are conducted ethically, efficiently, and effectively. We, as much as possible, attempt to deliver individualized services and so um, what that looks like operationally is um, we have um, very thorough assessments that are aimed at identifying the needs of these individuals when they come through the front door and we uh, do our best effort to identify um, the mental health needs of every single individual that comes into our system and so um, at the front door uh, we screen every person Every single person, men and women, who come into our system um, are seen by a psychology staff member within the first 24 hours of their reception. And so in this first uh, initial reception, um, we are again going to be identifying um, the uh, risks that that individual presents. Um, and so whether they are health risks or they are mental health need risks or risk of suicide or risk of violence, um, and we are also going to hopefully be identifying the needs that these individuals present. And then from this initial assessment and screening and psychological interview, we will then be able to tailor um, individualized services to meet those needs. At Montgomery County Correctional Facility in Pennsylvania, they have worked extensively and hard to provide treatment and programs to individuals with mental health needs while incarcerated. So we contract with Prime Care Medical, which is a medical provider. They're located in Pennsylvania. And we um, have a really robust and large number of groups and services that we offer people. We have a full-time director of mental health services. She is a psychologist. And then under her, there are many mental health technicians, mental health uh, providers. Uh, they don't do a lot of therapy because there's just not a lot of time to do therapy here. Um, but we try our very best to make sure that anyone who is suffering from a serious mental illness is hooked up with whatever services. So over the years, we've created something that's called Justice Related Services, JRS. JRS is run through an outside company, an outside private company. They come in here and they try to make sure and they help us with getting people who are incarcerated to get out of here because jail is not the place for people with a mental health. It's just not. And I'm sure you've heard a thousand times that, you know, prisons are turning into mental health hospitals and they are. We are facing a huge crisis when it comes to that. So, you know, we offer, you know, your basic NA and AA, anger management, um, medication, education. Um, we have a great relationship with probation and the courts uh, to do behavioral health courts to do veterans court, to do drug treatment court. We have a reentry coordinator here who um, will assist people with getting basic things like hooking them up with a driver's license, hooking them up with, with services that, you know, some people take for granted, having an ID, having a birth certificate, having a, a residence to go to. Um, so there are, there are many, many, many different programs we have here. Um, and we run some of them and some people from the outside do come in and run them, um, obviously when it's not COVID. We work with Family Services. It's a nonprofit, which is literally down the street from us. Family Services just received a grant. Um, it's called, it's part of a Second Chance Grant, Second Chance Act grant. And what that is, is one of the new things that we're doing is we're partnering with them to get people who don't have a serious mental illness, but do suffer some, from some type of mental illness, you know, a, a depression, a bipolar, but they're managing in the jail and they're, they're, they need services when they get out of here. Because what happens is when you leave here, it takes a long time to get into your local, um, into your doctor's office. It can take 
you know, weeks for you to get your medication started back up and your initial appointments started back up and things like that. So we're working with them to do um, almost like a telemedicine, like an intake telemedicine for these people so that when they leave here, they're already hooked up with a, a, a service and they can just go there and they don't have to wait that extended period of time. Because what we find is when people don't have those services in place, they relapse or they get back into trouble and they come back to jail. So we're hoping that our recidivism rates decrease with this partnership or through this partnership. These services, if they're in place and you want them and you work with them, which a majority of the people are, because they don't want to come back to jail. Um, you know, they you, you can tell that they're, they're excited, that there's a little bit more hope for the future. There's only so many people that are here. Um, there's so many restrictions. There's so many roadblocks that, you know, we, we have to work through and, and get these people help. That we have been cleaning up, you know, that's that's mo mostly it. We have clean, we've been cleaning up um, and we haven't had a chance to literally focus on like innovative and newer things that we should focus on. And so I would say that is the solution. The solution is to see that this person who is incarcerated, this person who has who has harmed somebody um, is, a, is a human and deserves the human, the human rights um, that, that they just, you know, that everybody deserves.